In this fourth installment of our series on the Orbit Reader 20, we're going to take a look at reading a file and marking it, doing different things in the uh, in the menus. It's gonna we're gonna break this up into two parts. The first part is gonna focus on the reading commands, and then we're going to focus uh, on the the menu commands, things like marking a file or uh, marking it up or bookmarks or finding text and things like that. So let's go ahead and move on to how to do some reading. So first what I'm going to do is turn on my unit, holding down my power button for two seconds until the display, there we go, pops on. And um, remember, it brings you up in the file or in the location that you last were, just like the old, for those of you who are old enough to remember the old uh, Braille lights. Um, uh, years and years ago that used to do that and so um, I must have been in the file manager because my my uh, my display says bookshare and that is a, a folder that I have that I have some reading uh, book reading in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter that with a dot eight and remember if I wanted to get out of it I would do a dot seven and here I am back at Bookshare, but I'm going to do an I, that eight to open that folder. And the first file in here says getting started. Well, you know what? Let's just use that one as it, as our uh, as our test. So let's go ahead and I'm going to open the getting started file again with a dot eight. And it starts out by saying orbit reader, blah, you know, guide. So anyway, so what's nice about the orbit is it will support both its own unique reading commands as well as the old style commands that were used on the refresher braille. So if you're like me and you, it's been a really, you know, you use a refresher braille for a really long time and it's kind of hard to make that transition, they make it kind of easy for you and that's nice. But they also um, incorporate a new series and set of commands for those who, who would want to use them. So I'm going to give you both when we run through this. So the first command logically is moving letter by letter. In the orbit, logically, again, you're going to go up to your navigation circle up here. And letter by letter is the, dot, the uh, left and right arrows. So I'm going to do a right arrow to go forward. And here, yep, O. And now R is the first letter here. B, and then and then of course it's revealing the next letter at the end of the display. Okay, so that's pretty easy. If I wanted to do it the old way, I would do a space with dots three to go back or a space with dot six to go forward. So I'm gonna do a dot space with a dot six. There we go. Yep, and it's putting me forward. And three, it's moving me back. Um, just a note that you might not have caught, or maybe you did, is that the entire display shifts when you are navigating by any, it doesn't matter whether you're using your panning keys or whatever, the display shift sounds the same. And that might throw your student because they might be used to seeing a cursor down here. Um, and, and, and like I have said before, this display in my opinion, is a little bit more noisy than others. So it, it might be somewhat off-putting. So just kind of re to reassure you that, that that might be something that comes up as a, as a kind of a side note. Okay, well, let's get back to our original topic here. Okay, so now we want to move by word. Well, if you want to do that with the orbit commands, it's a space with a left and right arrow select. So let's go uh, space, and says it says you know, the first, next word is 120, or is 20, then it says quick. So I'm, I'm, I'm going by word. Um, and I can go back, space with the left select. The old way is the space with dots two and five, five to move forward, so space dot five. And to move back, space dot two. Okay, so I'm going to go to the top of the file, and um, I'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, going line by line in the uh, 
the orbit, the, the orbit way, the new, new commands are just the up and down select arrows. So down takes you a line, a full line down, up, full line up, pretty easy. The old way was a space with dots one or dot four to move by line. Yep. So I'm going to come up to the tab again. Yep. Perfect. And we talked about for just a second, um, going to the top of the file to go to the top of the file with the orbit. There are two options. You can do the orbit way, which is just a, simply a dot one to go to the top four to go to the bottom. Um, wow. Yeah, that really went to the bottom, didn't it? Okay. I mean, it's, it's just amazingly fast how that happens. I'm sorry. It's just still kind of like, really that's fast. Uh, and the same commands that used to work with the refresher braille, refresher braille also work with the orbit. Chord one, two, three, take you to the top. Chord four, five, six, or space four, five, six, will take you to the bottom. Um, I'm gonna come to the top again, and as you can see, I'm kind of I'm a little old school because I'm so used to using that chord one two three, and and um, I'm also old school because I'm calling it chord instead of space. So sorry about that. So now let's talk about moving page by page. Moving page by page is kind of a unique thing because we have not had that ability previously with the refresher braille, so it's a new thing. So there is not a comparable command because it wasn't possible before. So in order to move page by page, we're going to do simply a dot six. We'll move you to the next page or form feed as they call it, or a dot three will move you to the previous. And the reason they call it um, form feed is because not all files come marked with page numbers. There are files that come that are just straight, if, especially if it's a straight text file, it's just, you know, continuous braille and there's no page marker, but they decided they wanted to find a way to have you be able to move in, in chunks if it wasn't marked. So it will move you by the first thousand characters. Okay. It either, either it will move you by a thousand characters or the page indicator, whichever one comes first. So that's why they call it um, form feed or by page. The next thing we're going to talk about is how to uh, move within a file in different ways. For example, you can make marks, you can create, uh, you can do what they call our power moves forward and back, you can search for text. So let's talk about bookmarks first. Um, for example, well, well first what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top of the file here and I'm going to want to place a bookmark. I'm going to go three words over, over where it says quick, And I want, come on, there we go. Yeah, here we go, quick. All right, so now I wanna make a mark here. Um, so I'm going to do a space with the letter M to make a bookmark. And on the display, it will show bookmark added. And it'll have that little hyphen uh, before, uh, before that message. So then you're, you can, um, go back to navigating and press any other key and just move along and through the text however you choose go you know line by line whatever you want and when you want to find that bookmark you're going to press the dots two or five to go forward or back a bookmark we only added one bookmark but if we if we could pretend that there are several I'm going to use the dot two to go backwards and here it took me right to quick now I have this bookmark here and suppose I don't want it anymore. I can do a space with M and look, it says bookmark cleared right on the display. So now I've removed the bookmark. So now if I try to move um, with the dot five, um, it's not gonna really get me anywhere. It's, it's, it's gonna say no bookmarks. Um, so that's kind of cool that that's an option that you can get rid of them that way with the same kind of a toggle key. The next thing we're gonna talk about is called the power moving and the power searching. Uh, it's it's kind of an interesting uh, way of, of, uh, of, of moving. And I'm gonna explain it first before we actually do it because it's, it's one of those things you really gotta wrap your head around. 
and it's by percentage. So actually, let's go to the top of the file. If I wanted to power search my way forward, I would do a dot eight with a down arrow. And I'm gonna show you what it shows me here. Oops, except it helps if you press the right keys. Here we go. Okay, so here it says 50% in the first page, in the first couple of cells. That's because the first time you do a power move forward, it takes you a percentage of the way into the file. If I do it again, and I, but I will, here we go, it will say 25, or I'm sorry, 75%, because it goes half of the distance between the point you are in and the end of the file, which is, which is 75, because that's 25%. If I do it again, and I'm going to um, go ahead and do that, it's going to tell me I'm at about 87% right here. So if I go to the end of file, for example, and I want to power search my way backwards, again, I'm going to do my dot eight, and I can't do dot eight down arrow because I'm already at the end of the file. See, it's going to show me end of file. But I can do a dot eight and up arrow, and oops, it's still telling me it's the end of the file. I got to get out of the mess, out of that message. It's going to tell me I am at 49%, which is really strange. But if I go back again. I am at 24%. I go back again. And again, it's it's decreasing by increment 12%. And now it's 6%. So it's it's decreasing by halves. Okay. So it's kind of an, a different sort of mindset. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is finding text. And finding text is really quite different because it depends on what file type you're in. If you are in a text file, you need to search in computer Braille, in uncontracted Braille, because remember, the Orbit does not have its own internal translator. Okay, so if you are uh, in a text file and you're trying to find uh, a specific string of text, you cannot use contractions or it will find, or it will tell you it can't find it because those contractions have no meaning within the context of the file, if that makes any sense. It's kind of, again, you got to kind of get into your mindset, into your, uh, into your magic TVI zone here. So now you've got that going. And, but if you're in a BRF file, here's another thing. You have to, A, make sure that you know the translation of that BRF file. Is it in English Unified? Is it in EBAE? Is it in, what's it in? And you have to be able to enter that text exactly exactly right. So, uh, for example, um, there, there are uh, words in, in UEB that are not used in eBay, that aren't written the same. So I'm going to say fever is one of my favorites because that you used to not be able to use the dot five E. But if you're looking for the word fever, and if you're in an eBay, eBay file, and you write F dot five E, it will tell you that it can't find that because no one, you know, that, that word isn't going to be written that way in an eBay file. But if you are in a uh, UEB file and you write F.5E, then it will find it if it's there. So that's kind of an, another odd thing. And going along with that, you have to also make sure that you are writing your Braille correctly and spelling everything exactly right and using your contractions exactly where they need to go. Or, again, it's not going to find it.